At this point, most designers have heard of Reloom, the AI site builder that allows you to create a sitemap with just a prompt, then allows you to edit that sitemap and then turn the sitemap into a wireframe by just letting the AI do its thing. And since this came out, I have been a big fan and not only me, it's been super popular, even to the point that even bigger companies have started to copy them. But now they've taken it to a whole other level by introducing the Stell Guide, which allows you to turn that wireframe into an actual visual design by implementing a color palette, some typography, but even more stuff like your button styles. And they've been working on this feature for a few months. I've been in contact with them. It was not done yet. It was like half here, but now beta version one is here and we can fully test it. And with this level of AI, I am seriously starting to think that some people might lose their job. And personally, I am seriously starting to rethink my workflow because this has the potential to save us so much time. But before we jump to conclusions, let's first check it out. And I want to test this with a fake client brief because we need some kind of prompt to begin with. And I found this brief online for a travel agency that focuses on skiing and snowboarding holidays. So people can plan their trip exactly how they want. They're specialized travel agents. So this can be interesting because we will have to use some kind of posts, maybe for agents, maybe for destinations. So that's what I'm gonna use. I already have my account set up, so let's get started now. But before we start, I just do wanna say that I have this because I had a surgery. I'm recovering right now. I cannot take this off. And I also don't wanna take this off right now. My recovery is going well. So let's get started and we can simply start by adding a new project over here. And then of course I'm gonna copy that brief that I have and I'm gonna paste it in here. It's a little long, but better long than short. The number of pages will probably be a little bit more. So let's pick five to 10. We're gonna do it in English and generate the sitemap. We've all seen this one before. It first generates the home. And if you're happy with that, you can click on generate the other pages. It's divided into about services, a blog, and then contact. I am not editing this. This is in real time. Okay, so here's a travel page with the three services and then one block for each service. And then the regions. What is that? Is there some kind of post? Okay, here we have some kind of grid. Lodging. Here also we have some kind of post. The resorts. Looks more like a blog with a gallery okay so it's not perfect yet but ai is a starting point and eh? it should not replace us okay now let's go to the style guide and let's see what's happening okay plan the perfect winter trip and then we have this photo of inside of an office i guess that's then the meeting where you discuss your trip regions to explore for skiing okay that's a photo of a kitchen <laughs> top resorts <laughs> okay this is not a resort i guess comfortable lodging i mean that's a comfortable chair okay so the photos do not really match but it looks interesting. So now let's go over some of the features that we have right here. Uh, one of the funny buttons is the shuffle button. So when you click that, it just shuffles the styling over here. And you can also do that for the typography. Typography often has a huge impact on how it feels. Okay, let's go with this for now. And then in the typography section, you can, for example, say, I like this heading font. So we're gonna lock this and then we're only gonna shuffle the body text because I don't think that it fits really well. And then we get some other options. And these are Google fonts, by the way. You can already see it's free, so you can use them on your website. And then this is the last section, the new section, the styling for the buttons. So let's go up. We can see some buttons over here. And we also have the shuffle button over here. Look at that. These bubbly buttons, the super rounded one, the simple ones. I like this one. For now, they only offer six styles, so they could add a little bit more. But again, this should be a starting point and you can also uh, change the rounded corners. So let's go with this one. It even has animations over here. Very cool. So can we maybe go to another page? 
No, we can't. Okay, that's something that I don't understand. But you can already, for example, upload a logo. So this means that you can also insert your client's logo in here and just make a quick mock-up for them. There's even a dark mode logo option. And you can even make the logo bigger because all clients want that. <laughs> And then you can switch the whole thing from light to dark, which is exactly opposite. My moon is light and my sun is dark. I have no idea why that happened. Maybe down here it's different. Okay, it's probably the majority of the sections then. But you can click on each section and then it will change it to a different color in that same palette. So over here you have a few options. I'm now in the dark theme, so you can hold command. Then you can, for example, make it lighter and see what happens. It automatically switches the color of the typography so you don't have to do that yourself. And there's even an option here to edit the images. So here we have an image, but let's say that we don't like this. So we want something different. Let's find an image on uh, Pexels of skiing. How about this one? Because this one has pink, which probably fits nice with the purple. So let's upload that image. And there we go. But let's say that I don't like this layout. The only thing I can do here is change the colors. So then we can go back to wireframing mode. And then let's scroll to the homepage. And then over here we can replace this component with something else. So let's do something like this where we have a full width photo. And now we're going to go back to the wireframe and it has applied that new style. Really cool stuff. But where are my other pages? Like I seriously don't know. So let's take a look at the previews over here. We have a mobile view. That's also really nice. Let's expand the preview. Okay, can we now click on the different things? No, we cannot. So let's try to share this project to see if the client can actually click on the other pages. Copy the link. I'm just going to open a new incognito window and then open this link. Okay, so here the client can see the sitemap. They can see the wireframes, all of the pages. And what if they click on the style guide? Okay, full preview. Can they now click on things? Okay, interesting. So the style guide preview is only for the homepage, I guess. So I think this is some feedback for Reloom. They're asking here for feedback at the bottom. Um, I think it would be really cool if you could click on the different links. I understand that that might be a bit hard because then you also need to build some kind of menu for mobile. It will become more complex, so maybe this is good enough. Maybe I'm asking for too much, but we can have different previews here, which I also wanted to show because when it comes to visual design, there's often not one option. So you can close the preview and then over here you have concept one. So you can do a new concept. So now we're in concept two and now we can go crazy. So we can do that same thing by shuffling all of these things. Or if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing, then you can click on surprise me and it will generate something completely random. But this is not something I am a big fan of because this is not how you should design, right? I understand that they implement it, but this is a step too far. The reason why people get so lost and they have no idea what to do on websites like Dribbble is because there's simply too many options. And then they end up picking something that they personally like. And of course, every designer has its style. But before you reach this point, you should have already had some conversations with your clients to know what they want. I mean, this is not just a toy, right? It's a business tool. And so very cool that this is possible, but maybe I'm too negative about this one. Also something that I see, feedback for Reloom, is that it doesn't apply the image. I mean, why would I not want the same image in concept 2 as in concept 1? And what's also weird is that concept 2 has no images at all. Not even the images it used in version 1. So what do I then have to do? So that's a bit weird when you're presenting it to a client because then you have to say only option 1 has images. But all right, let's say that you're done here. You can click on pitch the concepts and then here you can see the preview and you can even add a description in here. So you can add something like this style works for the brand if you want to focus on etc. And it saves it automatically 
because when I switch back to my incognito, oh, I didn't even have to refresh. That's really cool. So see how that works. And then the client can also preview this one and then switch to the next concept like that. And then there's one more feedback that I have, and that is that in the normal wireframing feature for clients, there is a comment feature. So they can click somewhere and then when they have an account, they can add a comment. But in the style guide, there is no comment feature or is there? Did I not find it? And maybe you don't even need a comment per section, but just one comment over here per design that already would be nice so that the client can at least add one note instead of having to remember it. So as you can see, this feature can save you a lot of time. So I don't know about you, but these kinds of innovations make me really think about my own workflow and about the web design industry in general. And again, this is not a finished product, but it has all the basics. I mean, think about how much time it costs to make this by hand. First of all, you have to come up with all of the sections. Then you have to set up all of your typography all of your spacing etc and without a tool like this you have to do that by hand in figma and of course you can already use some kind of pre-made templates and then mess around with that but reloom can really improve your speed and efficiency so think about this for a one-man agency like I have, it is great because I can work faster with this. I can make a concept and then start a conversation with my client. But think about an agency where you have multiple people working on a project. Now, for the boss of that agency, what used to take one week for one person now takes half a week for a person so why would you hire two people and that's why i said at the beginning of the video some people might lose their job because it simply takes less time because i haven't even showed you the most crazy feature and that's the export feature so let's say that you're happy with this concept one you can go to export over here and then you can export that to figma let's try it so now i'm in figma i have installed the real loom plugin and now I'm importing my project. And this took a few minutes, uh, like three minutes. Uh, it says I have six hours saved. Yeah, maybe they're right. Let's click on done and let's see what it has done in the background. Oh, it has pasted it over the starting screen. I would hope they would just generate a new page because I was not aware, but I can just drag this somewhere. And then I have the design in Figma. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, uh, as you can see, but it's pretty perfect. Let's see if it's built in a smart way. Yes, it's automatically linked to the typography already. Let's check the headings. Heading one, heading two. Is this a subheading or something tagline? Perfectly. Normal body text. Heading four. What about the buttons? Is that already a component? Did they build it in a smart way? Yes, it is a component and this one as well. And the color palette is already uploaded. So yeah, I think you're starting to get my point. This can save you hours of time. I am seriously gonna think on how I can implement this. It's not perfect yet, but this has huge potential because you can still do everything you want in Figma. It's not like one of these other tools that just poops out a website already developed. So with that perspective in mind, it's not that expensive at all. And I know that Relu makes a big deal out of exporting it to Webflow, but at this stage, you're still designing. Should you already export it to a development tool I'm not so sure because it's not perfect yet. You don't exactly know if this is what the client wants and need. You probably need to add a lot more things. It's a good starting point, but like I said, the wireframes for this website are not good enough. I probably want a whole page with destinations that people can click through and maybe go to a single page template. But now I have a good starting point in Figma. I saved myself hours and I can continue from there. So if you just export it to Webflow or maybe in the future, they will even have like Elementor here, but then there's a chance that AI will replace you because then what did you do? What did you add to the recipe not that much and so you need to become better than what ai is offering that's why i've been saying for like a year that maybe we as web designers should become more like service providers that's how we should think of ourselves not just as website delivery people no we help the client figure out what they need 
A website for most businesses is a marketing tool. So what is the marketing angle that this business is trying to achieve? And what kind of content do they then need? And that requires questions, conversations with your client, which then gives you the information to make changes. But you don't have that information yet when you're starting out with a simple prompt over here, even though this one was already quite long. So yes, I'm going to rethink my workflow. And I do think that some agencies can become smaller with this. But just make sure you are good enough so that AI cannot replace you. Because clients can also click on buttons. Okay, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And then I hope to see you in the next one.